Is the economy stupid? Now, that was a phrase coined back in 1992 by James Carville when he was advising Bill Clinton in his successful run for the White House. In 1992, the U.S. economy was experiencing a recession and the incumbent President George W. Bush was perceived as out of touch with the needs of ordinary Americans. James Carville reportedly told Bill Clinton campaign staffers to hammer on the importance of the economy at every opportunity they got. Cavill even went so far as to hang a sign in the campaign headquarters reading in part, the economy stupid. Now, as the year 2024 begins to wind down, millions of Nigerians will be wondering, is the economy stupid? Let's bring on my guest on the show tonight. Ugo Dre Obichuku is a public policy analyst and the founder and CEO at Nara Metrics. We appreciate your time making it here again uh, as we begin to wrap up the year. Always bossing. Thank you. Is the economy stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't forget that. Um, that just a bit of history, <laughs> forget, though. You know, it, it was, it's, it's actually a question. Is the economy stupid? stupid. Kind of like an exclamation mark. Yes. But like, yeah. So uh, I, I think, I mean, it's the same thing. So right now, it's the economy. I mean, uh, to anyone who's listening, that is really what matters mm. uh, at the moment, um, Boasin, whether it's uh, from a monetary policy perspective or fiscal policy perspective. Mm. It's the economy. That's really what matters now. This is not a time for politics. It's a time we're for we're not in a recession, really. But mm -hmm. the economy right now, in terms of what the policies are, how much of the fiscal policy news do we have in the outgoing year, if you try to separate the news from the noise? Well, um, hmm. I don't know what you, uh, news from the noise. <laughs> 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 because they're kind of like wrapped all together, yeah? So... Uh, but I think it's a, it's been a year of um, very tough, um, you know, physical policy implementation. And you do know that a lot of talk around physical policy is still being implemented in, in tranches. So most of what we have seen this year have actually been around uh, the effects of the subsidy removal, which has been one of the major policy fronts of Which the Which was back in yes. 2023. 2023, yeah. So and the impact is what we're all feeling this year. And I think further removal was done at some point this year as well. Mm. And that's why fuel price sort of jumped to over 1,000 uh, 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 as well. Now, uh, in terms of fiscal policy, again, uh, we've seen the implementation of, of the 2023 budget in bits and pieces. Uh, we've even seen, you know, uh, uh, a new budget, a supplementary budget, uh, being uh, approved as well. But what has mostly dominated uh, fiscal policy this year has, of course, been the, the so-called tax reforms uh, that they we're looking at, um, you know, codifying at some point soon. That's probably going to be law. Uh, and then we've also seen uh, the finance ministry as well uh, trying to uh, get uh, Corey favors from foreign investors and trying to ensure that, uh, you know, paint a picture of an economy that is, you know, moving in the right direction. You've seen a lot of uh, parley with, you know, foreign organizations like the IMF, uh, trying to tell them that, look, as much as we're not adopting <coughs> IMF policies, mm -hmm. what we're implementing is kind of similar to what the IMF likes. And that's why you see even AMF saying, well, we like what's happening in Nigeria and, and all of that. And then you've also seen a lot more of talk, uh, not a lot of action. Uh, I mean, you just read in the news recently now that uh, we're looking at talking to Saudi Arabia for collaboration for iron ore. So there's been a lot of talk around uh, how we can move, uh, you know, mineral resources or that aspect of our economy going. Uh, so, and then we've also seen a lot of talk around oil and gas as well, trying mm. to see if we can get investors into the upstream sector and make sure that the the um, the um, petroleum bill, the petroleum act, as it's called, uh, pieces of pieces of it that has been meant to have been implemented, for, you know, for can some time now. Some, some, so, some yeah, so that it can start well. to attract investment. Mm. We've seen uh, oil majors also exit and government allowing local companies to sort of buy some of those. So that's basically what it's been. But more importantly, more recently, has been the MTF, mm. which just came out. I, I, I'm trying to see the year and look at policy pronouncements vis-a-vis mm. -vis reforms. Mm -hmm. uh, when you make a pronouncement, but again, reform is like taking the car to the mechanic. Um, it doesn't get done in one minute. So, so, so if, if we take a cue from 2023 mm -hmm. to 2024, uh, does it look like we're more of a policy adjustment and fine tuning this year 
rather than making fresh pronouncements. Even the Taiwan Dealers Committee uh, was put in place last year, I think, just about a year. So I think, I don't think so. I think what we're, where we are now, if we're to look at it in phases, is we're currently at the start of implementation. Now, what it looks like this current government is trying to do is essentially uh, upend physical policy to a large extent, as much as also retain elements of what the APC government typically does. So the APC government is actually the you know, type of government that, that has that likes to spend, if you if you can uh, put it in that in that sort of context. So, but then uh, to allow them, you know, room for a lot of the policies they want to implement, they have to change regulations, they have to change laws, they have to be. There's got to be a lot of reforms that you're seeing, not just on the fiscal policy side, on the monetary policy side. So it appears you're seeing things occur in phases, right? Unfortunately, uh, it's a lot of pain for a lot of Nigerians because. Uh, a lot of these reforms do take time to materialize into anything if, in fact, they will materialize, right? So, um, you know, it takes a lot of pain to go through those things. Mm. Uh, and so that, that seems like what they're doing. And then, fortunately as well, or maybe fortunately, uh, they're also going through reforms at a time when the world is changing, right? So you have, you know, elections going on across the world. Um, people are actually busy trying to sort out their own issues. In the United States, for example, you have a new government coming in, so they're busy with their own issue. France, uh, the French president, even though our president just went there, is actually busy trying to also save his own his own government. Uh, UK has new new leaders in there. So there's a lot of things going on around the world. So it appears time is also something that the government doesn't have luxury of. And so as much as you're seeing them implement a lot of policy reforms, uh, they do also need some kind of external backing, uh, which hasn't really come yet. And that's why you see some people saying, look, why don't you just, you know, why don't you just go to the IMF and get this bill out so that this suffering, you know, can, you know, be alleviated for Nigerians. We can, we can yeah. ease it. Yeah, but that appears that's not what the government but wants But if we look at where we are right now, it looks like, well, we found a new level of 1,500. Whether that is going to hold water at the base is, is, is anyone's guess moving forward. But... Uh, so we take the, the, the full subsidy removal and, and, and exchange rate realignment, in, in a manner of speaking, looks like it's still work in progress uh, moving forward. So if you put this together and, and you add interest rate environment of this first full year of mm -hmm. Tinobu's administration, because yeah. this is his first full year, by the way, yeah. to have calendar month. So yeah. that's what we're sitting down to review his first full month, really, uh, a full year vis-a-vis uh, yeah. -vis Half year sort of from last year from Buhari's administration. So looks like everyone will say, well, I think by now they should know exactly what they're doing. So we talk about reforms and then we've got a number of interventions, mm -hmm. which include social reforms, uh, out of pocket, helicopter money. You've got a lot of money from the uh, excess uh, from the first subsidy, then you give it to the state governments or subnationals. We're not really sure. People can really see the effect on the on the street. So uh, if we put all of this, are, are this, all these interventions and policies yielding result, or they're still at best described as work in progress? I think it's a work in progress, and, and it also depends on what you're looking at. So if you look at some indicators, if you decide you want to look at indicators, right, even though the president famously said, now, that's how we go chop. How's that? How was that? How did he say that again? <laughs> right? So, if you look at indicators, you say, mm. oh, GDP growth rate, you know, surprisingly at 3.4%. Mm. Uh, inflation, as much as it's high, probably didn't escalate as much as some of us uh, predicted. Even the exchange mm. rates, at some point, uh, some people thought it would hit. Even some of us even thought, I also thought by now, probably would be at like 2,000. Uh, but we're currently officially at about one five something. Yes. So uh, if you look at some of those indicators in terms of foreign trade, we're running a, a trade surplus, uh, probably the largest trade surplus that we've run in a long time. If you look at the balance of payments, we're also positive. So from a data perspective or from a macroeconomic data perspective, there are some you know silver lining here and there, and more importantly, tailwinds. Mm -hmm. But if you go to the guys on the street, to the regular Nigerian, it, it's all, you know, mostly gloom for a lot of them. So things are 
critically expensive. Businesses can't expand because they can't borrow. Interest rates are pretty much high. In fact, the message out there is that don't even borrow at all because uh, except you, maybe you have something really, really productive that you want to do that has skill that can absorb borrowing cost. So, but with the sort of interest rate you have here, SMEs are being told don't borrow at all. Mm. So, if you look at it from a real life perspective, Bosin, mm. uh, you know the question politicians typically ask: Has your life been better this year compared, compared it, to last it, year? Exactly. So that's the first question: Is the economy stupid? <laughs> <laughs> because at, at the end of the day, you've got a government that is spending, and we heard all of that for eight years of Buhari's administration. Yeah. That they got to spend their way out of recession. The former finance minister told us mm -hmm. that we got to spend our more way out of recession. 2016, 2017, I remember. And then we keep spending on a number of things. And then eight years was over before it started. Then we're now in another first four years, as it were. So folks try to understand where is the nexus between a government that is spending, uh, 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 I won't say excessively, but spending big, mm -hmm. but also incurring fiscal deficit, which is also big. And the man on the street is where the productivity would have to come from. And that productivity is what will touch him or her, through which the whole amendment through the, uh, the fiscal, the tax reform, style with this committee, will come to some measure of fruition. So if we are getting the macroeconomic numbers nudging uh, and looks like they want to move on the needle, mm -hmm. But, but we can put it out on the street and for businesses in terms of confidence. If we look at business confidence in South Africa, it's moved from 114 to 112 before the election, yeah. May 29, to 118 points last mm. month. Mm. So we haven't been able to get that in. Forward pricing for FX about 2000 for a one year contract on FMDQ. Yeah. And that tells you at Nera Metrics that something is still out there that both local and foreign investors are not comfortable with. What would that be? Fiscal deficit, I, th I think you mentioned it, and I think that's the major elephant in the room. Uh, fiscal deficit, like you know, is when government is spending more than its revenue. And we've been incurring fiscal deficit for the better part of a decade. So it's not like this is the first time. It's just that we are now at a level that is quite scary. Um, before now, you know, how we tend to plug fiscal deficit is maybe through ways and means. And we all know that that, that 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 avenue is completely blocked now. And so what you're seeing now is government trying to spend as well to try and you know provide infrastructure in quotes so that you can drive economic growth. But at the same time, you're running large fiscal deficit. In fact, if you look at the current MTF, they are planning a fiscal a record fiscal deficit of about 13 trillion or thereabout. Mm. And about half of that amount or if not more, I think about $8 trillion of that amount, is going to be new loans. Now, if you look at the budget itself, uh, the larger part of the spending for our 47.9 or so trillion budget is actually debt servicing. So debt servicing is gulping about $15 trillion, uh, just slightly under capital expenditure, which you know we probably won't hit 100% spending for. Mm. So you, you yes. look at it, and, 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 and I mean, if you're a foreign investor, you're saying, hey, wait a minute, guys, I can see a lot of the things that you're doing. But I'm a little worried about your, your, your fiscal deficit. But what type of foreign investors of are you talking about here? Foreign investors, so two, two, two types of foreign investors. Yes. So there is usually the ones that come first. And the ones that come first are the foreign portfolio investors. These are the ones that would come and give you a little bit of a bridge finance, if you can use that word. So they the come Euro with bond. their hot money, euro bonds, and a lot of those things. They come mm. with that, right? Mm. And we've seen that our euro bond has been oversubscribed. So which means, which is quite good, because it suggests that they feel like um, you know the economy is a little bit OK, not as bad as some of us think. Mind you, uh, they, are, they are actually buying our euro bonds at record interest rates at mm. about 10%. That's almost close to junk. Uh, so those ones are the first set of foreign investors now. But the kind of foreign investors that we need are the foreign direct investors. Those are the ones that come in mm. and stay. And if you go look at the data, for the over, over like eight years or so, we've not really had tangible foreign direct investment into the country. So we, go to, so we welcome the Prime Minister from India, the one from Brazil. Then we go to Saudi Arabia. Then we go back to, well, it's, I guess we've been virtually everywhere. <laughs> Uh, the last was South Africa. South as, Africa as, as well. well. So, mm -hmm. are we looking for foreign portfolio investors 
or was Mr. President looking for foreign direct investment? I'm not sure the Indian Prime Minister was here for, for portfolio investment. No, I think what they're doing is they're looking, they're shopping for foreign direct investments. And they are, they, the part of the plan appears to be true trade. Now, what you're seeing across the world now is a new form of globalization where trade is at the center of everything. So you're going to see a lot of bilateral trade between countries uh, going forward. And so the sort of bilateral trade that we're looking for now is the bilateral trade that can help us harness the resources that we have, natural I and human discussion resources. with the Saudi Arabians. Exactly. Lithium discussion with exactly. Syria and Ramaphosa exactly. in South Africa. Is that exactly. what you're talking Agro about? with the Agro. French as well. So with the see, French as well. Exactly. So you do need so investment like to harness those So it looks like President Chinobu is beginning to say, look, Cardoso, you can, and, and, and the DMO, patients on the high, you folks can, can work on the monetary policy. I've got to look for the long-term deep capital which here, we need which we need yes you think that's been missing so far yes that and and that even this year 2024 yeah that essentially underpins his their entire economic policy so if they don't get that right mm. then a lot of the sacrifices that we're making now is just going to be futile so what's very important is you you know what you guys work on ensuring that you have all the, uh, the, the, the sort of the policies or forex policies that you need to attract those FPIs so that you can give us some kind of life support, if, if I can use that word, okay. while okay. I work on ensuring that you have FDIs come in mm. into the country uh, to help. Now, there's something else that I think that might change the game a little bit next year as well. Now, if we do have that rebasing, which they plan to do, mm. then bossing that sort of changes the dynamics as well, because all of a sudden, we no longer have a debt to GDP ratio of 50%. We're probably going to be looking at a debt to GDP ratio. Well, that's change the reality that's on the street. We'll it might it. not change the reality on the street, but that's not what you're trying to change with things like that. You're trying to change the perception outside. So you're trying to cut foreign investors. So you have to give them the impression that the economy is actually large, Right, and I have some data to underpin that, which is GDP number. So you actually yeah. have a large economy, mm -hmm. even though most of it is purely informal, but you need foreign direct investment so that you can harness the potential that you have in the country. That is the message. But the only challenge here is that those investments, when they come in, are they really going to stay? How are they coming in? Are they going into the stock market with you? And I know should be where a lot of these investments should flow. And, and that's that where is... my horizon in what you call somewhat predictable when the current reforms could be said to be yielding results in terms of how predictable are they? And we'll talk about business confidence index. Mm -hmm. So we rejected the cabinet just uh, not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago or thereabout. We got a new minister of trade, industry and investment, which is very, very key. Uh, in terms of uh, productivity and, and making sure that everything is right. So do you think we'll be talking about 10 years more or less right now? Because the soundbite from various government officials is that, well, we're working, there's yielding results, we're laying the foundation, we're, we're not sort of phrases to describe what is currently going on. And I'm trying to understand, to understand this lump of phrases as to what exactly does it tell me? <laughs> you know, as far as I know, as much as, you know, the current government tries to often dissociate, sound like it's it's new, mm. I think it's it, it's the same party, so it's a continuation of, of mm. whatever it is Buhari's government did, as mm. unfortunate as they have behind. been, mm. uh, especially because of COVID and the oil price crash that we had in 2015, but it's the same government. So uh, there's no 10 years, Bosin. Mm. If we don't start to see results, uh, from next year. I think that uh, it, the government won't be happy themselves, right? Because you do want to start to see some kind of results. And the first, the first indicators would always be your macros. Uh, you might not immediately start to feel it on the streets, but you want to start to see, because macros don't lie. Once you start to see GDP growth rate of 5%, 5% plus, then you know that jobs are actually being created. And that's what some of these reforms are meant to provide. These reforms are essentially meant to go and dig up all those aspects of our economy that has been lying fallow for years. We no longer want to be an oil-driven economy. So we want to be an economy that is diverse, that government has a diverse pool of resources. And so that's what all these reforms are doing. So if Nigerians are stomaching all these reforms 
and we don't start to see some kind of improvement. Let me give you an example of one thing that you should expect to see in a year or two. If you don't see it, then you should be worried. One is consumer finance. You've got to have consumer finance because you're not having a brand new set of middle class who all of a sudden have found that, or graduates, who all of a sudden found that, you know what, I can't even afford to buy a car. I can't afford to pay rent. Mm. My, my house rent, I want to move out of my parents' house. I can't pay. How, how are they going to fund it? They need consumer credit. So that's why you even see the government focus a lot on consumer credit and all that. Yes, so yes, you're going to have all those sort of things. put a pool of funds into that. Yes. Is it about putting the pool of funds together or engineer folks to be productive to earn it? That's what I'm saying. So I, you have somebody who is working here in Arise TV, fresh graduate, is productive, doing very well yes. here, but the person can't afford to pay rent. So you've got to be able to access credit to do that because you've now essentially moved your economy closer, further, further away from socialism to capitalism. Mm -hmm. And you know what capitalism is? Capitalism is essentially competition. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, a, there's no longer government subsidy for a lot of things that we used to enjoy. So you're essentially saying, you know what, you guys are on your own. But you got to provide credit because that is the oil that will start to get mm. spending going. And I think it was even the, the, the I think I think it was the Minister of Finance or the CBN government that said the, the growth that we're looking for has to be consumer driven. It has to be a consumption driven growth. And you can only, you can only get consumption driven growth when people start to spend and mm. they can only spend when they have access to credit. What should we what should Nigeria prepare for in 2025? Ugodre. <sighs> Do, do, have, we, do have, have we taken all the pain? Now we can take the gains next year or start to unlock those gains or we should prepare for a little bit more pressure, mm. a little bit more pain, mm. as it were. I, I think there's, there's, there's a bit more pain to come. Uh, probably will not be as severe as it was in the first half of this year. That is what I think. I think perhaps a lot of those very well. hard pills uh, we've swallowed. Uh, so, for example, I don't see full price going to say one eight or two thousand the way we it jumped from six hundred to one i don't think that's going to happen next year uh, i do think that tax reforms might bite in the first you know few months when they start implementing especially for businesses uh, as well uh, i do think that um, a lot of jobs would gradually be created as much as some are being lost uh, that jackpot syndrome would reduce a bit so i think there'll be a bit more uh, employers will have a bit more laxity now, and I think there will be more jobs uh, to be created. I think cost is going to be pretty significant as well, how people are able to manage their costs. You're going to see an entire change, Borsen. One of the things with reforms like this is, like I mentioned earlier in one session, is that habits are going to change completely. We're not going to be living the way we were living two, three years ago. It's not just possible. Think about it, Borsen. A typical graduate can't live in maybe Lekki uh, in Aja, even these days. Mm -hmm. So how are people going to leave? So now you start to see infrastructure projects like the blue line and the red line start to mean something to people because then you need to start to have real estate developments around the red line area where you have the railways passing mm -hmm. and all that so that people can commute easily to work. So mm -hmm. a lot of things are going to change. And I think you're going to see the start of that next year. That is what I feel. I'm going to hold you to that. Borsi. We'll get you back in or before the new year. <laughs> Anytime. It's nice speaking with you. Same Thank here. you so much. Uh, the founder and CEO at uh, Nara Metrics, uh, Ugodre Obichuku. Thank you very much for coming here.